So I'm going to be talking about device simulations and numerical modeling of a filament discharge plasma on HPC. And my talk is just one slide long. I'm uh, just going to give an overview of this uh, work. So the system we are interested in modeling is a hot filament discharge of argon plasma. Uh, the system looks somewhat like this. It's a coaxial plasma discharge system with an inner cathode which emits electrons and it's of very thin radius of around 0.3 millimeter and an outer coaxial anode shell which is of 7.5 millimeter radius and the region in between is filled with argon gas maintained at a given pressure and we are specifically interested in modeling plasma mode transitions in this kind of a system and plasma devices where uh, such mode transitions are of interest and of importance are components, certain components of all thrusters used in um, space propulsion, some sputtering configurations like cylindrical magnetrons, as well as emissive probes used in plasma measurements. And, the, and we make a reasonable uh, assumption of azimuthal symmetry and uniformity as well as axial uniformity and use an axis symmetric, that is radial 1D3V electrostatic particle in cell code with Monte Carlo collisions. And this code is uh, from the PECX peak suite of peak codes that I developed with uh, coworkers. And uh, on, on NORSC, it, uh, so it's a HPC performer, it's a hybrid GPU CPU parallelized Fortran code with OpenMP for the CPU parallelization or OpenACC for the GPU parallelization. And in NERSC, it runs on one GPU node of Perlmutter and utilizes around 20 CPU cores and one GPU. And in the simulation, in this device simulation, we are actually operating this device in, in a low energy depo deposition condition. That what it means is that we maintain a low electron injection current, the radial injection of the electrons, and also maintain a, a voltage bias that is just a little higher than the ionization voltage needed for the argon. And uh, in, in these low energy deposition conditions, instead of getting one uh, plasma form, forming, we actually get two plasmas in one in the upstream region, which is the plasma two, and one in the downstream region, which is a plasma one. And what we find is that uh, uh, the two plasmas, they are actually coupled through multiple uh, collisional and collisionless processes. And that leads to interesting mode transitions, wherein either the plasma one and plasma two aid each other's growth and they mutually approach each other. The plasma one moves upstream and the uh, plasma two moves downstream or they compete for space where one expands and the other recedes. And we are specifically trying to model this couple system and the mode transition it produces. A short overview of how the two plasmas form. So you have the cathode uh, electrons emitting, uh, emitted from the cathode, which ionize this argon background and produce this, this conventional plasma two. And there's a less conventional plasma that forms in this region, which is, uh, formed by uh, like you have uh, argon ions which are coming from this plasma true they move downstream and in this region where there is electron space charge uh, some of these argon ions they uh, perform charge exchange collisions with the background and as a result from low energy ions and these ions get trapped in the potential well of, of this space charge and that forms this another quasi-neutral plasma, which is the uh, plasma one. And so we performed sets of simulations of this system with various parameters and using that simulation data, we uh, formulated a, a, sorry, a predictive mathematical model for this coupled system in the form of coupled partial differential equations. And for example, uh, uh, one of the variables in this in the system is this radial extent RV of this plasma one. So it would be somewhere here. And we and uh, in, in the system of equations, this RV parameter, it's it's a it's strongly dependent on this 
charge exchange uh, mean free path, the charge exchange collision mean free path. And uh, this is a solution where, uh, where we plot this RV parameter as a function of uh, the, mean, the mean free path of charge exchange. Which is uh, and which is plotted here. So here the red lines means uh, 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 a longer mean free path, so more uh, less charge exchange, and the blue lines means uh, a shorter mean free path that is a more uh, uh, that is more charge exchange. And as 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 we see that when when there are more collisions, uh, this R V parameter uh, grows faster. And next, we use uh, simula simulation sets. We wanted to validate this model. So we again use uh, the simulations to validate the model. And uh, uh, we basically artificially enhanced or decreased the charge exchange uh, collision cross-section using a similar uh, parameter called F. And we found that uh, this, this uh, simulation and uh, and the theory have uh, and the model that we developed have good uh, qu qualitative agreement there are some quantitative differences and and the differences are also well understood in terms of effects which the sim which are included in the simulation but are not quite uh, included in the in the theoretical model so that's more or less an overview of my work <clears throat> Great, thank you so much.